Hello and welcome back to the Life Nourished channel. Today we are going over a really beautiful Longines with a black dial. This is a really interesting piece. It's obviously had quite an interesting life and we'll get into what I mean by that statement, but it definitely has had a very interesting life um, since its manufacturing in the 1950s. So super excited to jump into this piece with you, get into its history, history of the specific watch, um, its movement and all those details that we always go over in these videos. So without further ado, let's get into it. It is no secret, the thing that collectors judge first about a watch is its appearance. Even more importantly, collectors scrutinize the dials of watches because it's ultimately the part of the watch their eyes will be looking at the most. Not only are collectors looking for the overall aesthetic of the dial of the watch, they're also looking at it for originality. This scrutiny to some is more extreme with vintage watches. One opinion that is fairly inherent with collectors is the love for vintage watches with black dials. This Longines is a great example of what collectors love. Interestingly, this has been a pretty hard piece to research. The markings on the case were fairly minimal, and so there really is only one of these pieces that I was able to find online, and the website doesn't seem to be uh, functioning. So um, identifying additional information about this piece was tough. But there still is plenty of information this watch can tell us um, by the markings that are on the case, as well as its movement. First of all, as you can see, the watch is a 34 millimeter time-only piece manufactured by Longines in uh, 1953. If you look at the case back of this watch, you'll see a signature at, at the top of the case here and it says 10 karat gold filled DNA. This would indicate that the case of this watch is 10 karat um, gold filled. However, if you look at the watch, you can obviously see that it appears that this watch is actually stainless steel. The first pretty interesting uh, revelation about this watch. What likely happened is over time, the 10 karat gold filling being fairly fragilely applied to um, cases during this era, um, came off during its lifetime. A watchmaker likely polished the remaining gold filling off and exposed the stainless steel case that this piece has. This is also likely because the example we found online, we, we did see a picture of it and it had a yellow gold case. So I think the idea that the gold plating on this was polished off is very likely. Some may say that this might look like um, a, maybe it's white gold filling, but if you look at the case back, you can definitely see some of those polishing marks. The DNA stamp that, you, that I mentioned on the, on the case back is referencing the case maker. The case was manufactured by Di Vincenzo and Arien, Arienti, which was a Brooklyn-based case maker who manufactured watch uh, cases for brands like Longines, Omega, Rolex, and Hamilton. Swiss brands were taxed at a quite a high rate during the, this period for importing cases or importing watches. And to avoid that those high taxes, many brands developed this relationship with case makers where they would commission cases to be made in the USA and um, they were then um, sold obviously in the USA market. This reference is a good example of this. We actually covered a few pieces that had cases made by Di Vincenzo and Arianetti, like the solid gold Longines that had a really incredibly attractive case with a diamond and guilloche dial. Although the case uh, Ha, does not no longer has its gold filling the steel is still fairly attractive if you look at the lugs um, Well, I should say if you look at the case, it's a two-part case so, you, so it's got a snap snap on case back and then you've got this middle section that houses the the um, the movement 
as I mentioned, the lugs are um, long and quite flat. If you look at the look at the profile of this watch, which I think plays in the favor of this piece because it allows it to sit sit um, quite large for 34 millimeters. The st steel case still has fairly sharp corners, and the overall design of this watch is still quite attractive. The dial is really what's breathtaking about this watch. The watch features an incredible black dial that has aged fairly evenly over time. What's really nice is you can see just a couple of flecks of age on the, on the dial as you kind of turn it in different lights. It retains its deep black color and as I mentioned has those specs. The watch has recessed hour markers which have um, sort of a silver tone to them. The Longines logo is applied and the Longines name appears to be printed on the dial. The subsidiary seconds dial uses a similar motif and has a really beautiful circular finishing to it that you see on many um, subsidiary dials um, of watches. It also has these really nice sword hands which give the watch an overall uh, strong appearance. Simple, attractive, and beautiful are perfect ways to describe this specific piece. If you pop off the case back of this watch, one can see um, additional case back markings. The watch was sold by the Longines Wittenauer Watch Company that operated out of New York and Montreal. The company's name is engraved on the inside of this case back, and Wittenauer, just to give you a little bit of history about um, this relationship, Wittenauer was a successful brand in the USA and was acquired by Longines in 1950, just after World War II, where they became the distribution partner of Long for Longines. <clears throat> In 1969, Longines Wittenauer was sold to Westinghouse Electric Corporation, and in 1994, Longines ended their distribution relationship with Wittenauer. But during their partnership, many different models hit the market that were interesting, that are interesting to collectors today. The case back also confirms the fact that this case was in fact 10 karat gold filled and was manufactured by Di Vincenzo and Arianetti. Unfortunately, and this is why researching this piece was quite tough, there are no reference numbers on the case back, um, which is why it was difficult to research. It does have a case number <clears throat> that um, I believe was Di Vincenzo and Arianetti's way of tracking their, their cases. Obviously, once you've popped the case back of this watch, you will expose the movement, and the watch is running on the caliber 23Z movement. The 23Z movement has a sister movement, the caliber 23ZS. The 23Z movement, which is in this piece, has the subsidiary seconds on the dial, whereas the 23ZS has a center seconds hand. This was a movement that was also in that Longines that I was mentioning, had that uh, 14 karat solid gold case. So it's quite cool to uh, have covered both of these movements on the channel. The movement is fairly historic um, for Longines. It was introduced in 1948 and was upgrade was an upgrade from its predecessor, the caliber 10.68Z, that was introduced in 1925. To upgrade the movement, the movement had a shock resistance system and anti-magnetic protection added, which were both concepts that were extremely evident after uh, World War II. It was also quite historic considering how much of an impact the war had on Euro the European economy. So to release a new caliber so close afterwards was fairly astonishing. Longines later produced the caliber 23ZD, D describing the addition of a date complication to the movement. The 23ZS and 23Z were replaced by the caliber 280 and caliber 370 in 1960. Some additional information can be seen on this movement. On the bridge that suspends the balance wheel, one can see an engraving that reads LXW. This inscription was the import code used by Longines Wittner, the Longines Wittenauer group when they imported movements from Switzerland to the US. So again, it ties the idea of the movement to the inscriptions that we see on the case back of this watch. So it's likely that this movement was put together in Switzerland, obviously, shipped and imported into the US, and then it was met up with this case that was made by Di Vincenzo and Arianetti. I'll give you a quick look of this watch on the wrist. Um, as I mentioned, 34 millimeter case. However, um, the fact that its lugs are 
quite f uh, the, the lugs are flat and quite long it sits really really nicely and at a really nice uh, sort of angle for the wrist and again the black dial is so attractive to to wear um, and really does capture um, capture your attention when it is on your wrist while this watch does have some quirks to it and a reference number is unknown at this time this Longines is the epitome of beautiful. Black dials will forever be desired by collectors because in vintage watches, it seems like they are more rare. And in an attractive watch like this Longines, they really cannot be beaten. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this Longines from 1953 with the caliber 23Z movement. And you'd, normally I'd be able to reference what the actual reference number of this piece is, but I really uh, had trouble finding um, that out. Um, I, I was really disappointed that one website didn't uh, wasn't working for me, but if you do know what the reference number for this piece is, please let me know in the comment section below because that would really aid a lot of the research we do and I'd love to do an update uh, to this to this video um, if, if more information comes to light about this specific piece. So if you do know the reference or you have one of these Longines, please let me know uh, in the comments section below. If you don't, Please let me know what you think about this piece. I do think the black dial is extremely attractive, and uh, <clears throat> I think having this piece on the wrist is, is always a joy, especially given that it's, it's a flat case. It allows it to sit quite nicely and quite large on the wrist for a 34 millimeter watch. Um, it's just a, a, a real beauty to, to, to be able to enjoy on the wrist and um, an interesting part of Longines' history. Um, so, really fun, enjoy, really had a lot of fun um, covering this piece even though it was difficult to research. We've got a couple more videos that are going to be coming out um, over the next couple of weeks to cover some of the pieces that we covered a few weeks ago, so stay tuned for that. If you are new to the Life in the Wrist YouTube channel, <clears throat> be sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend who might be interested in watches and might be interested in learning about this specific long jeans. As always, we will have a article that goes with this video on lifeinthewrist.com. You can go to the editorial section of lifeinthewrist.com to read that if you are interested in seeing some more about this specific pieces. We'll also have some pictures of the watch over there if you are interested in, in, um, in reading that article. If you wouldn't mind liking this video, it really does help me out. I hope you guys have had a great start to 2024. I'm looking forward to what is to come and I'm sure you guys are too. With this said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and until next time.